Hello, everyone. Today, I have a jar of jelly beans, and I want to share them with you, and I'm sure you'll love it. But wait, there are many of you in this hall, and I'm not sure if I've got enough beans in my jar for all of you. I think I need to know how many jelly beans there are in this jar before sharing them with you, and maybe I have two options, right? I can open it up and take them out one by one and begin to count them. But I'm not going to do that because it takes too long and I don't, I don't have that time. Maybe I can try to guess the number of beans. Let's say 2,000. But most likely, this is not an accurate estimate, right? And my error can be very high. So I'm going to put it here. <laughs> so what else can I do? The science of collective intelligence gives me a third option. It simply says that if I ask all of you to give me your best estimate of the number of beans, the average guess will be surprisingly close to the exact number of beans in this jar. And this is because we have large enough population here. And when I take the average, more or less, underestimates and overestimates cancel each other out and remove the error. That's why the accuracy of the group can be far greater than the individuals in many simple estimation tasks. And this is what first Francis Galton, a famous mathematician, discovered in 1906. He collected the individual guesses of 800 people in a guess the weight competition where people had to estimate the weight of a dead car. And the winner was the person with the closest guess to the exact weight of the animal. The amazing thing he observed was, no one guessed correctly, none of the individuals. But everybody, all together, got it right when he took the average of all 800 responses. We call this the wisdom of the crowd. And this is a very powerful tool to harness the collective intelligence of a large crowd of people like you. And my research has been inspired a lot by this amazing concept. But I am a graduate student in environmental sustainability, and I don't really care how many jelly beans there are in a jar, except for tonight. But honestly, I care how many trees there are in the Amazon, or how many elephants there are in East Africa. I think the world is facing more important problems than <laughs> jelly beans, and I am particularly interested in how we use natural resources, like ocean fisheries, more sustainably. You may think of sustainable fisheries more in terms of seafood. Over the last few decades, because of rising populations and demand, it's been widely acknowledged that the global fish populations are increasingly becoming overfished, with some alarming projections indicating that the productivity in the ocean will completely collapse by mid-century. That's bad news. And if we are going to have any hope of developing policies that allow us to live in balance with limited resources, we need a better way of understanding the state of the environment. But unfortunately, this is near impossible in many places all over the world where there is lack of data, lack of monitoring, and lack of scientific knowledge about these resources. So, Instead of estimating the number of jelly beans, can we use the wisdom of the crowd to fill these gaps and better understand the state of a fish stock as an example of massively exploited natural resources? In order to know if the crowd is wise in dealing with such problems, we need to conduct simple experiments with questions we already know the answers to see what the crowd is capable of. So we simply started by asking a crowd of 31 striped bass fishermen in Massachusetts to estimate what size fish they caught most often to least often last. This information is important because in order for us to plan for the future, we need to know the demographics of fish populations to set sustainability policies the exact size, population, and other demographic information of striped bass fish in Massachusetts is regularly collected and monitored by NOVA. So in this particular case, we have the right answer, and we can easily test out our idea. Surprise! When we compare the average crowd response 
with the scientific data collected by NOVA, we see that the crowd collectively got the answer exactly right. That's amazing. But what about more complicated problems, like estimating variables that represent human activities and human influence on natural resources? What if we ask the same crowd about to estimate the number of recreational fishermen in Massachusetts? The number of fishermen is also another important information in assessing the impact of human activities on fish stocks, and we don't actually expect the fishermen themselves to know that number. The exact number of recreational fishermen in Massachusetts is 168,214, and the crowd estimate, which is the average of all individual estimates, is 160,000. That's incredibly close. And this is actually not a coincidence because individual estimates have a range from 2,000 to half a million. And the best individual guess, possibly from the smartest guy, is off by 9%. Surprise! The crowd estimate is off only by 5%. <coughs> so here the crowd is even smarter than the smartest person in the crowd. But these are all simple estimation questions, right? What about more complex problems? What if rather than averaging everyone's estimate for a simple question like jelly beans, size of fish, number of fishermen, we try to average everyone's ideas about more complex problems? Even though you may not be a conservation biologist or environmental scientist, that we all interact with our environment, urban, rural, suburban, every day and over time, we encode those experiences into a series of cause and effect relationship in our mind. This helps us to structure the world around us, and we use these internal mental models to both make sense of the world, but also to make decisions. Even though none of our individual mental models are likely completely accurate, what if we used the logic of the wisdom of the crowd and averaging a diverse set of mental models? Could we begin to see surprising patterns emerge? Patterns that are more aligned with reality than even the smartest person's understanding of the real world? To answer that question, we asked a crowd of 250 fishermen in Germany to individually represent their mental models about fish population dynamics in a freshwater lake, which is a complex problem. They simply started by identifying important elements such as fish, their habitats, other species they interact with like predators, and humans. Then they found the cause and effect relationships between these elements based on their understanding. We mapped these brainstormings out to make their mental models visible and analyzable. Each individual has a unique mental model which is neither wrong no completely right. But we got 250 different mental models from a diverse crowd of fishermen. We combined all of these mental models and used certain averaging techniques to build the crowd mental model, which is representing the collective knowledge and average understanding of the crowd about fish population dynamics. In this particular type of problem, we don't have scientific data. I mean, observed numbers to compare the crowd response with. Instead, we have scientific opinions. We compare the crowd mental model with a scientific reference mental model generated by a group of fishery scientists. Surprise! None of the individual mental models match the scientist mental model, but unexpectedly and amazingly, the crowd mental model is accurately aligned with scientists. This model is very important because it enhances our ability to predict the consequences of our decisions. For example, how an increase in fishing pressure would influence fish population, and therefore it helps us to construct a kind of scientific knowledge about complex problems <coughs> using the collective intelligence of a non-scientist community. So as we move from jelly beans to fish to ecosystems, to perhaps more complex problems, like climate change. Crowds can do pretty amazing things.
So next time you walk down a business street across a large crowd of people with possibly very different ideas, perspectives, and mental models about what's happening in our real world, think about the collective intelligence that may emerge from this crowd. The incredible things you can do and the many problems you can solve. Because none of us individually is going to have the right answer. But if we treat the diversity of ideas, perspectives, and knowledge as an asset, we should feel confident that together we can all get it right. Thank you.